and our filter you can put the filter on both ways not really make a lot of difference I always do it this way so that the little cut out bits there on the right um, if you look on there there's a little noggin that goes into there that basically stops you from putting the the fuel at wrong angle for argument's sake you could if that wasn't there you could turn this spout up if I do it so it doesn't actually catch maybe it won't do it on this one but there you go so you could screw it in like that and it could cause um, basically an air block or whatever you're better to have it in the position that they put it in like that for the simple reason that where your petrol tap is and you've got your fuel pipe coming down you need to leave a little bit of a u-bend on there and to be honest with you most of the sediment from um, you know a little bit of a rusty petrol tank will, will sit in the bottom of the pipe um, I'll just go and grab a bit of pipe I do know where that is so your pipe would go on there like so and then you would have a, a bend not dissimilar to that basically it's a little bit long but um, you get the idea that because this is a low point in effect you should always get your sediment there the it it would probably be more closer to looking like that straighter up All right, I can pull that back off again these uh, Vespa clips they're not Lambretta ones right we can take the choke mechanism off now just by undoing the choke uh, cover the threads on these um, 90 percent of them have been damaged in some way um, what it is is people just try and put it in you know when you're at the side of the road and the bike won't go and they're putting it in at an angle you know they take the threads out over the years should be nice and clean like that one I don't know if I've got no I haven't got a spring in there but the plunger itself um, if it was on the cable it would just literally pull out so that's your choke plunger and on the end of it there is your seal pad which goes against the uh, the choke jet itself inside so what I tend to do with this one the mixture screw the air mixture screw screw it all the way in don't force it again and start with one and a half so half one one and a half turns to two turns out and then depending on how it runs whether it's um, two stroking um, idling uh, hunting is that's when the revs uh, pick up and then die down of their own accord it constantly goes da -da 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 -da, and then slower again uh, that would be adjusted by there um, obviously if that was pushed in too much you'd be getting too much fuel through could cause problems with the um, spark plug them oiling up um, it would take a while to oil up but they, they do oil up so to get the float bowl out is you've got two screws here on the Spaco um, Indian ones the screws are on the bottom for some reason I've never worked out why they did that don't really know uh, it could be because uh, machining costs I, I don't really know um, there's no real benefit in it so just undo the two screws on there and this will give you your float bowl your float and all your jets and all the jets in this range are more or less interchangeable so take the screws out like so there's your float bowl um, there is a tiny bit of sediment in the bottom of there I don't know if that camera's picking that up or not um, try and get some light in there so you can see it just in that corner but your jets are in this side so that side's clean right on the bottom if you look straight down from your choke there's your choke jet and your window is there to look at your choke when you're adjusting the choke lever 
um, and the choke plunger itself when it's fully down you should see that block so um, what it does if I can take the jet out this plunger itself basically does that that's no choke and as soon as it moves off it lets air in and brings in uh, the fuel basically and, and mixed in with the air through that hole which is on the side there so giving you more fuel to start mostly the, the jets are 45s or 50s um, I'll just have a look see if I can see what that one is da -da, 50 then you've got your main jet which is the little one in the middle there and you've got your pilot running jet and depending on which um, Lambretta that you're basically putting into these are these will all be different mainly the choke and the pilot are 45 50s they're around about there but the the main jet itself I don't know if the jet's going to come out of it so I'm getting a bigger screwdriver no it's coming out all together with the atomizer but you, you've got basically different atomizers and different jets this is a 104 and a I think it's a 5 they're kind of hard to read under this light but uh, a 8 right so it's a it looks like a 6 6 8 5 so 5 8 66 would be the atomizer on here when you're cleaning a car about you need all these I don't know if I, that's showing through there but you sh all of these um, passageways need to be clean and so does that you can blow down here and know it's clean and see through the end of it and know it's clean um, you're not supposed to put wire down there um, what I tend to use is on these brushes you get nylon ones um, you use the nylon cut a couple of strands out and use the nylon to clean them out or you can leave them soaking in some brake cleaner again right this pin here and that's your float if the float gets any fuel in it it springs a leak basically it's like leaving it open all the time because air obviously will push that up in the petrol mixture and seal against the inlet so if I take the pin out and pull out oh it fell off but that's the plunger that goes and seals the inside of the fuel so when that moves up on the float and it's fully home no fuel can come through basically all the fuel is doing is coming through there and into there so that basically is pushing against it that would be sealed and anywhere apart from that would let fuel in so if this float becomes full of uh, fuel or water or whatever or rocks or whatever that will always stay down and you'll get flooding problems what flooding problems tend to manifest is if you see that little hole on the side the fuel will come out of the side there if it keeps messing uh, the side of your car up and keeps coming out of there then look to this mechanism here and it's the same for all the Del Autos um, if you get f any fuel in them uh, you're basically snookered it, w it will just flood out and it, you know this simple thing that costs pennies can stop you from riding home break you down on the side of the road so when you're ever you're overhauling a carburetor uh, of any description and it's got floats in it make sure that it works the way you test this is stick that obviously back on give it a clean so stick it back in where it goes in like that push it back in the hole like so put your pin back in and just check it moves up and down freely and what you do then is just blow into there while holding that down if no air comes through you're fine if you then open it up and blow again like that you can hear the, the noise and then that's just dropped without me holding it I can't get anything through there so that that is perfect you don't want any more than that that that's fine so as I say you can tune your carburetor up 
for different scooters by changing the, the basically the main jet and the atomizer and also um, I've just put this back together again and I'll show you the other difference between the scooters and I'll put the choke jet back in again So you can look on all of these, I mean ideally I won't screw it in with the, the jet anyway but I'm not tightening anything. So I'm just going to stick the, the bowl back on again, I don't want rubbish basically getting in. Another thing as well, um, before I forget, there's a little rubber seal in here as well. Um, <clears throat> that shouldn't really stop it working it's only when you're bumping up and down and you know the bike's going over uh lovely condition roads that we've got in the country that's the only time that would leak it should never fill up more than that if this mechanism is not working then it will leak between the joint but generally i don't think i've ever come across any of them ever going i'm sure somebody will tell me that they have and they've had that problem with the carburetor so i'll just loosely tighten these up like so and give them a little turn as i say never 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 over tighten these screws because you will strip them I'm not so uh, manic with this one because it's it's basically screwing into the float hole so you could you could in effect i don't know where my um spring's gone but hey ho i'll find one i've got loads of carburetor bits and bobs when i come around to putting this on another scooter so I'm just going to tighten that up again with a 10 mil. And then what we'll do is we'll just take out the slide. So to get to the slide is two screws on the top, like so. And you'll find out that this is spring loaded. Because obviously you, you don't want the, uh, the carburetor staying open while you're trying to come to a set of lights or braking. So there's your mechanism inside and this is the slide um, they are all different slides and the GP or the 22 uh, mil carb has got a bigger slide than that um, let me see right. so if I can find a slide that's the GP 150 200 slide and they don't fit because they're obviously a lot bigger um, the inlet's bigger on it however that mechanism um, will, will fit the 125 but it won't fit the 200 the 200 itself is a, a, a unique carburetor to be honest um, they've normally got this hasn't got numbers on it but they've normally got numbers on them to tell you what model they are what's what model they fit on um, bigger carbs have got bigger jets they won't fit these but these uh, sh ranger carbs they're pilot jets they're atomizers as i say i tend to have loads of bits and bobs spare floats it's always wise um there you go i found i found an older one for this range with uh if I can give it a wipe, hopefully we can see the numbers on this. And they are five, five, nine, one, four, one. Now, without looking at the chart, I can't tell you what that fits, but it looks tiny, doesn't it? I don't know if that's got it's got a number on it. Yeah, two, five, nine, one, four, two. Five, nine, one, four, two. 59141 and they all fit different models and obviously again if you're putting them in make sure they're clean spotless because it can cock up your cylinder oh, I've got another one there that's another two so that's that in effect is the same that's in there just in a better condition basically because it's a new one not a second hand one but um, again I've got pilot jets everywhere 
choke jets, uh, inlets. It's all like I say, it's always good to buy stuff and acquire stuff over the years. Loads of main jets again. There's old step toes around again. Um, I'll have a look here. This is uh, Spaco compared to a Del Auto inlet. So that would fit on a 22 mil Spaco. And if you look at it, they've squared it off rather than put the pin. So you know they've they've done changes to the carburetors and whether they've made it better or not that's a matter of conjecture opinion whatever but um i've got nothing out here so i have pilots so i don't want them to be lost and i've also got some other bits for bigger carbs again <clears throat> so what i was saying about the slide the, the slides go for different models and there's charts that if you buy um, even the original Lambretta workshop manual it will tell you um, all over right up to the GP which slides fit into which scooter so it's quite um, easy to upgrade people like scooter restorations and other um, scooter shops do actually sell parts for these um, <clears throat> stick it back in um, you can't put it on the wrong way and while I think about it as well on the Spaco range they have a paper gasket that goes inside there again the Del Auto on the, on the Italians don't have that or at least if they do I've never come across one they might have it for a different range because these you know they're making this range for different manufacturers not just in Echenti <clears throat> And in fact the J range um, they use a, a different version of these carbs as well so I say most of these are interchangeable uh, that's an SH120 your tick over between this which opens up the slide we look through there we can see some light underneath and this one that will give you a nice tick over but this one will be it will tell you if it's hunting or stopping whatever and you can check with your spark plug whether it's too rich or too lean as i say out lean in rich the only oof, there are different carburetors that work differently than that um the 30 mil delorto pbh one's one of them from top of my uh, brain memory they they work the opposite way around and a lot of people get that wrong they screw them all the way in uh, you know and and it's back to front basically so they they think they're leaning in it off and they're not and you know we all been through that in the 80s when we used to be able to buy on cards you get the the carburetor basically the inlet manifold <clears throat> i'm talking about the 30 mil now and um i can't remember if they came with the air cover they might have done i don't think they did because they had trumpets and what have you um and you might be lucky and get a couple of jets that you could change around but um you know you you basically had a default carburetor setup that and you had you know when you're a kid you haven't got any spare parts so um you you would tend to run with what you got and we used to have shoddy 225 rebores and the good old days where you know Lambrett has really got a bad name in in the late 70s um early 80s before people start invested a lot of time and effort um in making them quite reliable i mean today you wouldn't believe how much more reliable <clears throat> the, the scooters are compared to what they were before um you, you can drive them all over the world now i mean you could when they were original uh, allegedly because you see exploits in papers or whatever but the the scooters we pulled out of people's garages and front yards and what have you they'd been standing for 10 12 years <clears throat> and you know they would dump for a reason because they were cheap transport and that you know it wasn't just a fashion thing it was a they'd broken down spares were hard to come by stuff like that so um <clears throat> a lot of them just got dumped in gardens back gardens front gardens and 
were basically left there. So you basically got a set of carburetors. The 1820 are the same more or less body. Just this this part here is a 20 mil as opposed to 18. The 22 mil is a slightly bigger carburetor with a bigger in, inlet and um, used only really on the GP 150 and 200s. I'm not aware of them being used on Vegas or anything like that. I think they were 1920s and 18 mils, something like that. They were this range with a slightly different number on them, which doesn't spring to mind at the moment. But uh, <clears throat> what can you say? That's basically the, the carburetor. So you're looking at, as I was saying, atomizer main jet mainly is the difference with the slide. So providing you look up in a workshop manual that uh, you know, you've got a TV 200, it should have a 105, 106, you know, somewhere in the region of that um, main jet and a 5942, whatever, uh, atomizer and a slide. Um, providing you've got the, the correct ones, the rest of it should sort of fall into line and what, providing that it's clear and like I said to you, that the float works. It's just a case of putting it on, kick it over, balance out your... Um, <clears throat> Your, your air mixture basically, like I say, in for richer, out for more air, uh, leaner, richer, leaner. And uh, then just getting a nice tick over when it's warmed up. And when you're setting your choke up, when it's open, you look through here. Like at the moment, I can't poke anything through there, so that, that would be down. When it's actually up and the choke's engaged, this window should become clear. And when it's down, you shouldn't be able to get anything in there. So that's a lot of thing that people do overlook. Uh, and again, you've got, you know, that's an over uh, petrol if the float goes. So you do get warning that the float's gone. It's just sometimes, you know, it's just pissing out on the floor for lack of a more technical word. And, uh, you know, it's always in a rainy day or halfway home or whatever, or in the middle of the night. And um, if you check on stuff like this occasionally, you know and change the bits as they wear out and about these should last a lifetime because all the wearing parts really are the slide which is sacrificial and the jets which they've got the flow of, of fuel through them you know I've, I've only ever really seen like i said when they when they cock up they over tighten this or force it in at an angle and they ruin the thread that's the major one if you're ever buying a second hand carburetor make sure the chokes are good uh, the thread's good, I should say. It, it seals. Um, and then the rest, you know, if it's cheap enough, you can buy the stuff and rebuild it anyway. Um, it's clank, clamped on, I should say, not clanked. If that's on the cylinder, then that pushes on. And then you've got this screw. I always use an 8mm or a 10mm. I can't remember what it is now. I think it's 8 Yeah, it's an 8mm. Uh, and a little 8mm socket to tighten that. Um, do it tight and then do it you know a little about an eighth more so it doesn't um, basically break because what it will do is it will break through there or the thread will go um, and all, another thing while I'm thinking about it as well and I will keep going on but these liners wear out and what you end up doing is you end up sucking air that should be dead tight but be able to turn so when it's sealed you won't get any air sucking in because it will make, make, uh, mess up your mixture um, and cause seizures and you know running problems when hot and cold uh, a lot of people overlook that and they're available as well again from um, good scooter shops uh, I keep mentioning scooter restorations but you know I've bought them from there before when I've needed them it's uh, no big deal they're not they're not expensive and they can save a hell of a lot of uh, running problems basically that you can't seem to put your your mind to why it's not running right when everything on here is fine you know and generally they sort of wear and you can do that when it's fully on you know, i won't be able to do that when that's fully home but <clears throat> that's that's another thing basically and what what you need to try and uh, understand as well when the scooter's on its stand it's at an angle so your carburetor could be like that when you're sat on it it's like that or it should be so what you're trying to do is when you put your carburetor on try and get it when you're sat on it so it's level 
because that's where you're going to be running if it's slightly off it won't make a, a lot of difference but it can make a difference when you don't get enough fuel um the big carbs the 30 mil carbs you often see them like really turn over like that and you know they've only got really fuel there and it might not cover the the main jet on the 30 mils in the middle anyway but you could get fuel starvation and before you know it you've seized up the bike again so this is your they're very easy they're very um like i say they're they're whether it's victorian engineering they're very easy engineering to get your head around choke main jet pilot jet air and you tick over and that really should uh, only really be used when you fine-tune this one so provided i start normally at like i said one and a half turns out from fully in um depending on this this needle you don't know if that needle's an original or it's worn you could be two and a half out or you could be one in or half in who knows basically so uh, i'm going to end this here now if you've got any questions obviously drop me a line or if i've sort of cocked up something you know we all live and learn but that's my understanding of of this range of carburetor anyway um they are, in my opinion, they're not the best thing in the world, but they're not the worst. They work um, and they tend to be, once set up, they tend to be quite reliable. It's only really, as I've shown you, where you get the little bits of dirt from the, the uh, rusty petrol tank. Um, this petrol tank had been um, cleaned out with uh, cider vinegar and was spotless inside. So it just goes to show it does. You know standing around and and using them and sitting in garages is no guarantee that rust won't reform inside especially if they're not fully um, filled up 